Hey, nerdiest radius. That's not my name. Nice textbook, stupid! What do you guys want? Come with us. Look inside. Closer. Ah! Get me out of here! Come on, guys! Wrongdoer. A very tiny wrongdoer indeed. Wait, will someone please tell me what's going on here? Ben, why are you here? What in Hades is a Ben? Silence, imbeciles! The court session starts now! Who will be your first witness, criminal? Um, our first witness will be the culprit Caesar Ambrosio. I, I simply that? cannot believe nah. that my best student would commit such a crime. In fact, I know she didn't commit this crime. She gets straight alphas in all her subjects. Order! Our accuser will now speak. Basil, a ceramist from Olympia, has come to speak. He has broken his arm at the crime scene, and he claims that he is unable to make pottery due to his injury. That criminal will have me banging on the streets! <laughs> what did I do? The day the Olympics started. Us businessmen were very excited because the start of the Olympics always brings a flourish in our business sales. Explain this event. Have you been living under a rock? The Olympics is a ceremony that we use to honor the king of all gods, Zeus. Competitors from all over come to compete in sports such as javelin, discus, rex, wrestling, boxing, running, and horseback riding. All free men and unmarried women can compete for your information. Ah, the Olympics. Though there were many differences between the social classes and the Athenian society, let alone the different city-states, they all managed to come together for a common cause. This is in many ways similar to the theme of the Olympics today. Athletes from all over the world are welcome to participate. Even refugee athletes can compete for the Olympic flag. Those who were victors were highly respected and considered immortals. It was one of the few examples of social mobility in Greek society. This represented the idea that sports and entertainment is one way to bring people together. The idea of athlete immortality might constitute why we idolize professional athletes. Also, many of the events in ancient Greece represent events today in the Olympics, such as wrestling, running, and more. Back when I was a young lad, I often dreamed of being in the Olympics. Even today, I can imagine myself as not Basil the Cerebrus, but Basil, the Olympic victor. What a joke. You think this is a joke? I spent 48 hours making this medical device that won't even be invented for another 1,442 years! Get to the point, idiot. Well, during the day of the crime, I was taking a chicken, whom I named Poseidon, with my brother and father near the Temple of Zeus to be sacrificed. Only someone stupid like you would name a chicken after the great god of the sea. Why do you guys keep picking on me? Because it's fun. I thought you were on my side. I am. Is there a problem? I, I guess not. Order! Well, back to my story. We Greeks sacrifice animals if we owe or want something from the gods. In this case, my mother had injured her foot and we wanted it to get better, so we decided to sacrifice Poseidon. He preyed on Zeus and the five elements. Earth, water, fire, air, and aether to help my mother heat. How can a dummy like you refer to Aristotle's teaching? Silence, imbecile! That's my line. Not anymore. Order in the court! Back to your stupid question. My father is a mathematician. He went to Plato's Academy, the same school that Aristotle happened to go to. He is familiarized with and has accepted Aristotle's theory of five elements. Aristotle was a famous Greek philosopher and scientist. One of his theories was the theory that everything was made up of a mixture of any of these five elements, earth, water, air, fire, and aether, which is another word for celestial bodies. Plateau Academy was not a traditional classroom because it used a very unconventional teaching style, allowing the students to direct his or her own learning by simply allowing to debate about their views and ideals with all the other students. They can agree or disagree, or in other ways, they can direct their learning. Back to the story. After we sacrifice an animal, we have to roast and eat it on the spot, then offer the fat and bones to the gods. We had just started on Poseidon's legs when we saw smoke rising in the distance. At first, we thought it was just from the commotion at the Olympic Games. It was. The, the torch was being lit, after all. But then, I saw people screaming from the Olympic stands, and I saw a flash of someone who looked like 
her carry the Olympic torch. I was personally afraid, but my father and brother wanted to see what was happening. Coward. How dare you say that about me? You don't even know about how my daily life goes. Please explain. If you insist. That was sarcastic. How about I talk about my daily life? Hey, watch the arm. Why do I have to work in the people's court? What is my use? Aren't there 200 to 500 jury already? Aren't, are they the ones who reach a verdict? Aren't the lawyers ones who suggest punishments and the jury the ones who vote on it? Where do I fit in? All I do is keep the order. Do you people have a problem with me speaking about my daily life? Huh? Do you? No. Order. You may begin. My name Three. is Glorious, and I am from Athens. I was born with a twin sister, who was a name because she died on her fourth day. I sometimes refer to her as Bernice. Poor Bernice. You see, the infant mortality rate is very high in Athens. Babies are not, are not named until they were seven to ten days old because they were afraid that their children would die. I hope that, that in the future there won't be so many infant deaths and we will learn from the mistake of killing innocent children just because they are weak. When I was young, I slept in a wicker basket in a wooden cradle in the women's quarters. Women have a separate li living space in the house. I also had a bottle for feeding and when I was slightly older, a high chair for eating. So the ideas of high chairs and baby bottles w were also in Greek culture as well as today. To ensure that I had straight and strong bones, my mother wound me tightly in cloth until I was about two. Even though the practice of wounding children in cloth is not an approvable one, it does say a few things. The Greek believed straight stature will leading to strong bones. In some ways, they are correct. We are always told not to slouch. Well, studies show that slouch leads to shoulder problems later on in life. So in some ways, the Greeks were correct about what they did to children. I spent my days playing with many toys like tops, rattles, dice, hoops, seesaws, and swings. What a mouthful. We also played a game called Epidremus, as many of you might know of. When I was a very young lad, maybe four years of age, my mother got me a bird. It was, in, it was in a little cage when I got him. We fed him and took nice care of him, but one fine day, I woke up only to see feathers suspended through his little cage. Many Greek toys back then posed a striking resemblance of toys today. The dice is a Greek concept, which later evolved into a people of gaming equipment popular in many games today. Ephedremos was almost like modern-day blind man's bluff. The Greek believed play was important. This shows their culture as they worshipped the goddess of playfulness, Pagenia. Hermes was also a playful god, as he was depicted as very mischievous. All the good times had to come to an end. When I was seven, I had to go to school and leave my mother and older sister behind at home. We sat around the teacher and learned about stupid things like math, Homer, and writing. I despised it. The misery continued through my teen school and into military school. I didn't get along with many kids, save one. He was my greatest friend and closest companion. That was, until he was killed in a riot. Get to the point. This is why, not, uh, why I'm helping arrest the person who knocked over the column. I think the jury is ready for the verdict. Wait, wait! I have evidence that she's innocent! Everybody watching is still definitely with us. What? I was at the scene that day. I saw that boy with the torch near the Olympics. He disappeared from the Olympic Stadium. Moments later, the holy temple of Zeus was lit on fire. One of the columns, the foundation of our holy Zeus's sanctuary, toppled down to I know who did it! Why are you blaming this on this innocent young lady? Whilst there are people who think they are immortal and entitled to disrespect the gods. I cannot stand it! Please, just tell us who the criminal is. Very well. The true criminal is... Perhaps you'll consider the possibility of this young woman's innocence after I explain why I think the true culprit is... THE ATHLETE! What? Well, first of all, he openly admitted that he had a difficult childhood. This would give him a reason to become a criminal. Second, he was near the column when it fell down. All the other witnesses had been far away when it happened. Finally, Fate handprints left behind from the night of the crime. If we compare the size of the athlete's heads to the fingerprints, we will see that they are the same. Fine, as long as you shut up. See the similarities between them! It's proof! Hmm. Anyway, it's up to the jury to decide. Or at least to spare the innocent girl.
start voting. Please place the stone of your choice into the reciprocals provided. You know the rules. Black stone mean guilty and white stones mean innocent. Pick innocent! Silence. You had your chance to talk, crazy woman. The jury has decided. It's the witness. Put him to death. Death? This girl is innocent. Thank heaven. Who did it then? I think it's pretty obvious that the real culprit is Boreas the athlete. Preposterous. Just stop. Anyway, that triggered lady made many smart points. We all know who did it. Now can I go home? No! I was <laughs> framed! Life is a lie! Alright, the court is adjourned. Time to go home!